there's going to be a lot of questions to ask Dave and uh, who, man, lots of going on. Yeah, I mean, we know that Wentz hasn't played well this season, but we also know that he hasn't had the weapons to work with. Uh, Doug Peterson can certainly get some of the blame. So uh, we'll get our take from uh, Dave Spadaro, see what, see what he has to say about this whole mess. And I think Dave is ready to join us now, Bill. I think he is. Let's get uh, – Dave, welcome to Philly Press Box for the first as a first-time visitor. Uh, we've been doing this about six and a half years, Dave. How did we not see you until tonight? I don't know. What, what, have, you been do- what, what have you been looking at if you're not looking at me? <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Well, I we love first-time anyway. guests, and you yeah, are a first-timer. But- Thank you, guys. Uh, great to and, have and you. And by, by the way, yeah. thanks for finding me at the Eagles' absolute bottom, <laughs> <laughs> like the lowest moment of the of the last six years. Hey, plenty of questions for you. Yeah, that's for sure. sure there are. I'm sure there are. <laughs> yeah, Dave. I mean, you're generally a very positive guy. You always try to have the positive spin. So this has really been a challenging year for you. I know that. And let, let's get right to it. The quarterback switch. A lot of people have, you know speculated this was going to happen over the last couple of weeks and then there was the possibility after the Sunday game uh, that it would be you know going forward into the next game we got the official announcement from the head coach on Tuesday Jalen Hurts will get the start Uh, do you think it's really a game-by-game decision now or is Hurts going to be the guy the rest of the season I mean you can't look ahead I mean you have no idea what's going to happen he's playing against a great defense in the Saints if he goes out there and has – who knows? You, you, I'm not even going to speculate on that. But, like, the Eagles need to be shaken up, okay? The offense has been terrible, um, and Carson's played very poorly. And so I think everybody saw how the team responded on Sunday when Jalen came into the game. There was a lot more energy. Whether that translates to Sunday against the great Saints defense, I cannot answer that question. But it, it, it does not hurt Carson Wentz to, to just take a step back here. And and um, it's not like you're discarding Carson Wentz. You you you've got to figure out if you can get him back. And I think the Eagles believe they can get him back. And at the same time, you got to give Jalen a shot. He's a second round pick, and he went in there and he did okay on Sunday. He he showed that the moment wasn't too large for him. So I think it is a game by game thing. And truthfully, it's kind of a day by day thing. Um, we'll see how it goes Sunday against the Saints. But I don't I don't I think when you're three eight and one. You don't look ahead to next year because you have no idea how it's going to all play out. Well, Dave, I want I want to turn back the clock just a little bit because this has been bugging me since January 9th. So I want to go okay. back to January 8th, January 9th, and and how it translates to today if it does translate today. January 8th, Doug comes out. He says Mike Grow and Carson Walsh are safe. They're here. They're back. January 9th, Doug fires those two. Um, we now don't have an offensive coordinator. We now have our fifth wide receiver coach since 2015 in an area that has, quite frankly, been awful other than the Super Bowl year. Way, way to hit me with the soft one first, Bill. <laughs> well, well, you know, and then, and then you get the coronavirus. This is going to be a, a chronological dismantling of the <laughs> no, 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 not really. I just I don't it, blame it, you. I don't blame you. It, it, it bothers me. It bothers me because Doug said all the right things. I have a hard time believing he thought his way through it and said they're they're coming back, and the next day he thought his way through it and he fired them. He got he got pressure from above, obviously wherever that came from, Jeff or or uh, or, the, or the GM or whatever. But uh, how do you feel? That's, about your, that? that's your that's your that's your opinion. Well, um, yeah, uh, I would say that it when you're three eight and one, you take it uh, you take responsibility. Okay. And I don't think the Eagles can point to much of anything that's worked out well this year. So, yeah, I mean, it's been – the offense has been lost. Um, and that's where most of the coaching changes came, obviously. So uh, I, I can't defend it with any sort of um, spin because it, it's – the facts speak for themselves. It, well, it, and, and I, it, I it, it, whether that, whether, uh, whether that, that was part – look, every move you make when you do well – contributes to doing well every move you make that translates to not doing well also is part of the in part of it so clearly that was a factor how much of a factor i don't know well and i think to follow up on that of no one's fault the pandemic comes now you have rager now you have uh all these young kids fulgham all these young receivers and you can't see them 
you, you know, they're not there. But to be in, in defense of, of that, like, you know, truth be told, every team had to go through that. Right. Okay. Yeah. So the, the Eagles, the, the before the season began, one of my thoughts was that the fact that Doug and Jim and Dave Zip were coming back in a division where there were three other new coaching staffs, that the Eagles have, have an advantage. And that clearly has not been the case. Me too. Well, speaking of those other teams, thanks to uh, the weekend's upset wins by the Giants and the Washington football team, which still, by the way, sounds bizarre to me, uh, the mm -hmm. Eagles are now more of a long shot in the NFC East. Let's see if I get the standings up right there. Do you have to remind us? Oh, uh, I'm sorry. <laughs> but what I want to ask you, uh, with the standings as they are, other than the quarterback play and maybe mix in a win or two, what do you want to see, Dave, from the Eagles over the final month of the season? I want to, I, you, you know, when you, I work for the team, I don't want to see a win or two. I want to see four wins. Of course. Uh, I So that that's what I want to see. Um, that's what I want to see. I'm not going to give up on it yet. The Eagles are not mathematically eliminated. I know it's very difficult. Saints, Cardinals, and, you know, the NFC is to finish it up. Um, but you certainly want to see young players develop. I want to see Travis Fulgham get back on track. What's happened to him is – Mystifying. I'd love to see Jordan Malata finish the season strong. I think he's an interesting player to watch. The defense, I'd like to see some of the younger players, TJ Edwards, Josh Sweat. There's not a whole lot of younger players on that defense. Um, I just want to see the Eagles win. I mean, I, I want to see the team trend going in the right direction. I want to see Jalen Hurts change the energy level of the team. Is he a better quarterback than Carson Wentz? I don't know that. Can – in, in in sports, does it does positive energy translate in different ways? Yes. Do I think this is Tom Brady replacing Drew Bledsoe? I I have no idea, but I look for the best. I mean, we work all week to get to Sundays, and you never go into Sunday thinking I'm going to lose or hey, I hope we play well or I hope we. I'm a proud member of the Philadelphia Eagles. I I I understand that I'm in the media and and I'm, I speak to the fans and I. Tell the, the truth as I know it and and, and with, with the understanding that I'm a member of the Philadelphia Eagles. So to ask what I want, I want to win all four of these gosh darn games ahead of us. Okay. Go. Well, hey, Dave, you've been around football forever, long time. Uh, have you ever seen an offensive line get in a situation <laughs> where they have had to change lineups every single week, right? All but it, one. It, yeah. Unbelievable. Bill, Bill, I going into the season, I was vehement. If anybody was listening, most people probably weren't. Um, that was I have never seen an offensive line during my time with the Eagles since like the Buddy Ryan days when the offensive line was just crap every year uh, and bad draft picks for, through Rich Kotai and all that. Just terrible. Such uncertainty because when Brandon Brooks went down, that was a huge loss, huge loss to lose him in the spring. Huge loss. And then knowing that, in my belief, Andre Dillard had a long way to go at left tackle, and then to see him in training camp, and he really needed more reps, more games. Jack Driscoll, all these young linemen needed more reps, more, 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 more. I was worried about it then. To go through the injury rash that they've gone through, no, I've never seen anything close to like this. I'm not sure they're going to start the same group that they started on Sunday against the Packers up there. I'm actually anticipating a, a, perhaps a change. Um so that would be 12 starting lineups in 13 games. Hmm. That is insane. Unbelievable. I, I don't doubt that that's contributed to Carson's yips or whatever you want to call them, or the offense's lack of ability to sustain drive or go deep. Or, you know, the long ball in this offense has been non-existent again. So, um, yeah, the offensive line, man. You know, it's fans, they, they glamorize the – the guys who score the touchdowns and the guys who throw the touchdown passes. If you don't have an offensive line in football, you are dead meat. And that's where, and the Eagles have always had a really good offensive line, but it's, it, there's only so much you can do. And everybody, somebody, at least one person's getting hurt every week. Dave, I have to hit you with another tough question. I'm sorry. Uh, no, you're well good. aware of the fact that the fans, while not being able to be at the games, are not real happy these days. They're unhappy with the highly paid five-year veteran quarterback. They're not thrilled with the head coach and his play calling much of the time. But they're also ticked off at the general manager. All of, his, uh, all of this, rather, less than three years after that Super Bowl victory. And to be honest, the drafts of Howie Roseman have not yielded any top-tier stars the last five years. 
is the criticism of his talent evaluation justified? Yeah, everybody's when you're three, eight, and one, everybody's part of it. And yeah, Howie's got to be better. Doug's got to be better. Everybody's got to be better. So yes, it is valid. Okay. The draft, it, it, the draft speaks for itself. Uh, I mean, look, the roster speaks for itself. The record speaks for itself. So yeah, for sure. Well, okay. and Dave, as you look at this roster, and, and there are a lot of young players, Rieger and some others that are, are pretty good. Uh, is there that one guy that you see that the Eagles fans can hang their hat on and say, you know what, this kid's going to be a star, Miles Sanders or anybody like that? It's a great question. No, Miles maybe. No, I mean, look, that's that's one of the things when you look at the roster. Do you see blue young blue chip talent? You know, it dep depends on how you're defining it. It's hard to say that based on the performance this year. Defensively, do you see young rising talent? You know, you hope some of the young linebackers develop, but maybe Josh Sweat, but there's not a whole lot of youth. Um, so, yeah, look, I, I don't know. The Eagles are 3-8-1, okay? Right. I'm not trying to – I'm not here to make the Eagles into something that they're not. Um, when you to, to get better, you have to face the facts, and the facts are that the Eagles are a 3-8-1 team, and the roster is, is not performing to the level the Eagles felt it would perform. Coaching staff isn't, the personnel department isn't, everybody is responsible. I want to get back to the quarterback situation. It's almost a certainty that Carson Wentz will be an Eagle for at least the next season. Uh, I don't think they can do a trade because of the contract. Uh, there will be a massive cap hit if he's not here. Can Wentz recapture his old form if Doug Peterson is also back, or would it take a head coaching change for it to happen, do you think? Well, I don't. I, I will say this: the, the first part, I never count out anything, ever. I was doing a radio show earlier today, and one of the hosts said, "Hey, I'm a big Bears fan. Tell the Eagles to trade Carson Wentz to the Bears. We'd love to have him." So, um, you know, you know, you have no. I, I'm not saying the Eagles are looking to trade him. I'm just saying right. you have no idea what's going to happen. Uh, the Eagles have to get more out of Carson Wentz. Carson Wentz has to get more out of Carson Wentz. Can Doug do it? Yes. He played at a very high level before. So I don't think that there's any problem with that. Uh, but I think that, you know, uh, everything that the Eagles do, from the way they um, coach the players to the way they have practices every day to the way they're conducting their practices, the, the execution of their practices, um, will be is, is extremely important that you evaluate that and that you, you can't say that it's just going to magically turn around. Can Doug bring him back? Yes. Is it going to be easy? I don't know. I've never seen a quarterback who's gone through this. Never in my life. We all hope it's momentary and it's you know keep building around him. But but certainly from a day, it starts in the day to day process and the day to day process has to be better. So Doug can do it. Carson can do it. But it's got to be done a lot better than what's happening right now. Mm -hmm. Hey Dave, earlier you mentioned Travis Fulgham. I wanted to go back to that for just a second. Uh, you know, we know about the numbers. We know he was leading the league there for a, a window. Now he can't hardly get on the field. And Chet's man, Alshon Jeffrey, Chet is <laughs> all done with Alshon. Uh, <laughs> I mean, this is a business. We we understand that this is a business, and sometimes contracts play and players don't and, and all that stuff. What happened in that uh, Travis Fulgham situation that not only is he not being targeted, he's not getting on the field. Yeah, it's it's uh, certainly people are justified in looking at that and seeing what's going on. The Eagles have gotten very little production from their wide receivers. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see Fulgham get more reps. But also, look, I mean, Fulgham, if, if Fulgham were doing the right things, I, I'm guessing, like, like some there's some reason, because before Alshon was – when how long has Alshon been playing? Three games? Has it been three games? Two so. or three games? Three. So, Great. so it's been so. Travis has been in the last four games. He's caught like whatever, four or five passes. Like it's been non-existent. So something's going on there. I don't know what it is. And you always have to earn your playing time. I always believe the coaches put the players who give them the best chance to win on the field. Is there influence from above? Always with every team in every game. But I refuse to believe that. Alshon Jeffrey is playing because he's just got the big contract. Um, will that now, again, four games in now, Carson's getting all the all the attention. Are there going to be other changes that we just don't know about? We'll see. I mean, we'll see. 
Um, but it wouldn't it wouldn't make sense to me to take out Carson Wentz as the only player who's not been productive. Okay, mm -hmm. we'll see what I, I, I I'm just saying this out of like what's going like you if you if you are addressing a football team, you go with those who are the most productive who give you a chance to win. So for whatever reason, Travis fell out of favor to a degree. Is it because of the contract? I have no evidence of that. I know there's tons of speculation. I just go with the premise of coaches and the organization put the best players on the field they think will help win. Uh, obviously, Alshon Jeffrey has not been productive. Obviously, Travis Fulgan has not been productive. Uh, obviously, uh, when Carson was playing, okay, nobody was productive at wide receiver. Now, will that change with Jalen Hurts? Let's talk next week. Dave, before we let you go, I want to play a game of Fast Five with you. But before that, I have another question for you. Um, okay. if, if I'm not mistaken, you've been with the Eagles organization since 1997. When the Internet era was still in its infancy and, you know, if we had the World Wide Web, there was a dial-up modem. It's a completely different world now, of course. Facebook, Twitter, a gazillion podcasts, et cetera. Does that, all, all that stuff make your job easier or tougher? Well, so my job changed a bit. So back in the early 2000s, I ran all the content. So we were actually on the Eagles website, PhiladelphiaEagles.com. We were pioneers. We were romp just romping through content. Um, then the all the social media came in. So we the Eagles content department really grew, and I became more of the face of the team kind of guy. And so uh, it makes it, um, as an older guy, I resisted social media at first. Mm -hmm. Um, because I thought it was just a bunch of dumb shit that's up on the, on the, on <laughs> yeah. everywhere. And people, most kids like, but I've learned to understand that that is a, a very effective way of communicating with people. And so I'm on inside. I do, I do podcasts. I do uh, the Eagles insider podcast, which is, comes out three times a week. And then I do a, an Alexa style podcast where it's a three minute Eagles update daily. And then I do, I have my Instagram page, the Eagle and Eagles insider. And then I have a Twitter page, the Eagles, uh, Eagles insider. So I've learned, I'm not as good on Twitter as I am on Instagram. Um, and I'm really good on podcasts. I understand the the various ways of creating content and putting it through all of the platforms. Does it make it harder? Nah, it makes it, you know, you just realize that you're kind of always on and people are always interested in, in what you're doing. And the more content you throw up there, I always tell this to kids who want to get in the business. I'm like, create your own channel. Go to YouTube and create your own channel. And people are like, people, kids think it's so easy to create content and it's not. It's, it's, I just happen to create that about the Eagles, but it, it's, I see it as a great vehicle for people and I embrace it and I've learned to appreciate it more. And, um, you know, it, it's, it, my job is, and, and now it's not only that, it's like I host events tonight, for example, I hosted a virtual wine event where former yeah. Eagles offensive lineman Trey Thomas has a bunch of uh, Eagles clients, premium service clients who have their families and they do like a, a paint and sip event. And then after that, after this, after I've done this, I go to another event and it's a crown royal event where we do like a little Q and A with a couple of Eagles alumni and the the um, the chef from uh, or the grand drink master or whatever from Crown Royal makes some drinks. We do a toast and it's just a way of keeping fans engaged. So during the Eagle season for me, I'm, I've always been 100 miles an hour. And then when the season is over, the faucet gets turned off and I just become a normal boring person you know <laughs> laser Bill, you got anything before uh, we do fast five no go ahead let's do it oh bill i'm sorry go ahead no go ahead let's go all right let's do it uh two minutes at the most for this five questions they're all easy just want to get your uh take okay. on some things speaking of hosting things dave number one how big a thrill was it to ride in the float and then do the introductions and everything at the Eagles super bowl parade ceremony in 2018 i have two children and i will tell you that the greatest day of my life uh, was hosting the parade, winning the Super Bowl and then hosting the parade. Yeah. I didn't have to wait 52 years to have kids. It was amazing. It was awesome. Uh, uh, you know, I'll tell you one really quick story. I, they gave me the, tro the Lombardi trophy was handed to me after the game. And I was like, I've been waiting my whole life. What am I going to do with the trophy? I was like, I, was, I panicked. I didn't know what to do. So I finally like cradled it like a baby. Mm -hmm. Big kiss. <laughs> and I didn't think that 80 other guys had kissed it. So by the time the parade came around, I was sick as a dog. But I had a great time. <laughs> great time. Awesome. Number two, I've never heard Merrill Reese speak badly about anyone with one exception, Chip Kelly. What's your memory of Chip Kelly's three years here and your relationship with him? Uh, I had a terrible relationship with him. I uh, don't like him at all. 
and um, hope that UCLA loses by 100 points every game. <laughs> Amen. I love it. I love it. All right, number three. I'll assume football is number one. What's your second favorite sport to watch? Basketball. Okay, easy. Yeah. I love um, Temple Owls. I'm an Eagles football fan, a Temple Owls basketball fan, and then anything that I'm playing or anything my children are playing. Okay. Then, then, uh, then Sixers. That's good. There are four weeks left in the regular season. What is the most likely matchup for Super Bowl 55? Green Bay and Kansas City. Oh, could be. And finally, number five, what is your favorite football movie? Um, hmm. I'm going to have to say Rudy on that one. I like the, the emotional heartstrings of Rudy. Was pretty awesome. Although I will say this, from back from the old days, Back in the old days, uh, Brian's song was again another very emotional yeah. movie, and then North Dallas Forty uh, taught me all the you know the behind the scenes. Hey, wow, people are partying in football. Let me get into football. That'll be a fun time. <laughs> I'll accept Brian's song or North Dallas Forty. I can't accept Rudy. Sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. Wait. Don't you have a thing against Notre Dame? Well, yeah, that too. I hate Penn Notre State Dame. Guy. I I hate I hate Penn State. I'm a Temple guy. I hate <laughs> I Penn State. I, I I didn't grow up with with college football, so you know there, there wasn't much of a presence. In, in, at Temple back then in college football. I got you. All right. All right. Hey, hey, Dave, before we let you go, uh, you hit on a few things. Let everybody know how they can follow you. Uh, you've got a ton of things going on. Hit them, hit them again. Yeah, uh, uh, Instagram, The Eagles Insider. I do well there. Twitter, um, Eagles Insider, at Eagles Insider. And then our podcasts are the Eagles Insider podcast and the Eagles Update. So I would appreciate you uh, hanging in there, Eagles fans. It's been a tough year for everybody. Um, if God had told you that you're going to win the Super Bowl and then you're going to make the playoffs two years in a row after that, albeit struggling seasons, and then the year after that you were going to really not be very good, you would have taken it, and you still oh, yeah. take it now. So, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah everybody. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> All right, Dave. Well, hey, thanks for coming by. Uh, we hate that it took six and a half years, and let's do this again. Anytime, guys. That was a pleasure. All right. Thanks. Dave. Thanks. Thank you. Take, take care. care.